Well, co-management is power sharing between government agency that's charged with managing fisheries, if, that, if we're talking about fisheries, and a community or group or region that wants to play a governance role at a local or regional level. It could be um, in Washington State, for example, it's a treaty tribe uh, that works together with the other 20 treaty tribes. In British Columbia, it might be a regional board. Uh, so there are many forms that the local organization can take, but the point is that it's place-based. It's a community or group that's dependent on a local fishery uh, and that really cares about it and is going to do a lot to make sure that it's managed well. In British Columbia, we have a regional management board that is seeking to co-manage. It's being told it's marine planning, but it is claiming co-management rights. And it's made up of three levels of government. It's, it's the, the federal government, the provincial government, the regional district, which is like a county, uh, and uh, Aboriginal governance. And, but the interesting thing is it's both Aboriginal government representatives and Aboriginal fishermen. And it's half Nechonlef, it's half Aboriginal and half non-Aboriginal. And so there's a recognition in some places that co-management is best served if you have neighbors who need to collaborate, like they're, 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 fisher, they're a, a plenty of non-Aboriginal fishermen and Aboriginal fishermen as well. And they both feel equally abandoned by government and so they've decided to work together. So they have a co-management board that is regional, that's the whole west coast of Vancouver Island. Although again, it's not recognized officially yet by government that they have co-management powers, but they're doing an awful lot that looks a lot like co-management. Yeah, co-management happens best when local knowledge holders are deeply involved because Anybody who thinks about it for a minute recognizes that people who live and have lived often for generations close to a marine area and observed it and know a lot about, they're not like scientists who come out for their field season for maybe two months, if they're lucky they get two months, but they, they're there year round. They have observed what's going on the whole time, so they really know. And my goodness, people who have observed stuff like that. There's a lot of literature, for example, Maine, in, in the U.S., Maine, the state of Maine fishermen who know exactly the year that a particular patch has been fished out. And they can say, I used to fish that one in, you know, 1956, and it went, it, 1957 is the year it got fished out. So they, they know an incredible amount about what's going on in the fishery. And if their knowledge isn't included, you lose a lot, and so they're the ones who would know what to avoid, how to build up a fishery again. Their, their knowledge, if you don't include their knowledge, that's, you're, you're missing out on a major dimension of co-management. So it's a huge advantage to scientists to talk to them, to ha and you, you're going to get their knowledge if they're allowed some influence in management. So you don't just say, oh, well, give me your data and then I'll run off and make my management plan. They should have much more power and influence than that. They should not only provide data, but then they should be involved in the discussion where you analyze the data and decide what to do with it. And then an even higher level of power that they should be involved in is making a management plan, designing a harvest plan that includes the data. In other words, you use the data wisely and that's how you figure out how to fish at a really sustainable level, which is not MSY. We, in Canada, we haven't done MSY since 1977. We, we, we talk about optimal sustainable yield, which is optimal meaning it balances maximum. It isn't, you're not trying for the maximum because you need to trade off other values, such as rebuilding. But, and I'm not a biologist, I'm an anthropologist. So there are a number of biological and ecological values that you want to optimize in addition to harvest in order to rebuild your stocks.